Michael Jones, I'm the Executive Chairman and Group CEO. Um, uh, Equatorial Launch Australia was founded in 2015. We secured a contract with NASA for the launch of um, three space missions, um, which we conducted from the 26th of June in, in 22, and over a 15 day period, which was good learnings for us. The contract with NASA got us all ready to go. They were a very demanding customer, a very generous customer in relation to imparting knowledge and you know, helping us from a skills perspective. And now we're working with, and the phrase we use is, we track 73 companies globally who say they want to launch rockets. We believe 24 of those are real. We think there'll be 14 or 15 who will get to space and 10 or 11 who'll survive. So we keep a constant track on the 24 who we look at as the, the probables and we're trying to secure six or seven of them as long-term resident launches, the term we use, and Phantom is the first one of those. Yeah, so we have signed a number of MOUs, but we're the sort of company that doesn't sort of talk about what we're going to do. We like to talk about what we've done. Um, so the announcement yesterday it was um, on the back of an MOU that we signed with Phantom Space Corporation from Tucson, Arizona. We signed that in September last year, and now we're moving to a um, multi-launch deal um, over a number of years. Um, Phantom have identified and selected us, which is really nice, and really are the first cab off the rank to announce that they're coming to Australia and will be launching with us. So it's really exciting for us. At this stage, all of our customers are overseas. So we spend uh, an inordinate amount of time on the road internationally. Um, you know, and unashamingly, we're making it a bit like water torture where, you know, we'll give these guys a contract so they'll leave us alone. Um, so, yeah, we're constantly on the move. This is our second time at Symposium, and it's a great opportunity here because this is the, the astronautical, uh, you know, equivalent of Paris Air Show. Everybody comes here, and so we can tick off a lot of boxes of both potential customers but also suppliers of the launch technology that we need. So rather than us having to reinvent the wheel, we can go to the guys who NASA and SpaceX and everybody have been using now for 20 years and, and leverage off that. Seen a really dramatic change over the last three years uh, since I've been involved in this where you know we were a bit of a novelty to start with. Um, we've had to overcome the perception because a lot of our customers you know, are relatively young, incredibly bright, but not all of them have been to Australia. So quite often when we show them photos of the Arnhem Space Centre and our red dirt, you know, in their minds you can see the tick over that, you know, this is a third world country and it's a long way away. So we, ha we have to be very aware of that. And that sort of, I think, shows the journey of Australia because um, Australian space is, is evolving. You know, we've got Skycraft, we've got a number of companies out there now with hypersonics, etc., who are making it on a world stage and I think are gaining credibility for us, you know, as a nation. I think also um, our government and in particular the Department of Defence are evolving in their sort of reputation in space. So I think it augurs well for us as long as we don't make too many missteps or, you know, go down too many uh, space rabbit holes.